in the local economy, we're looking to get growth going as uh, all of those major economies are uh, around the world. Uh, and the outlook for this year is for around 2.7% growth from around 2.5% last year. This is a very low level of growth, uh, maybe picking up to over 3% next year, but really not enough to create jobs and, and get uh, economic activity going, get more people off the, the social welfare and, uh, and economically active. In trying to get that growth going, we've got various constraints. Inflation on the one hand, we're uh, bumping up against the top of the inflation target range, that 3 to 6% range. The last number was 5.9% for consumer price inflation. And it looks like we're going to head above that, uh, the top of the target range in the next little while. That means that the Reserve Bank can't really cut rates anymore because of their concerns around inflation. The one positive is that most of that inflation is coming through from higher fuel prices, higher food prices, rather than on the demand side, people demanding more goods and pushing prices up. So maybe there is a little room uh, on the interest rate front, but it looks like on balance with a very low level of growth and with inflation up at the top end and, and above the top end of the range, that the Reserve Bank will likely stay pat on rates uh, for some time to come, well into 2014 at least. What we are seeing if we look at the, at the local economy, if we look at the consumption side and the production side, all of the, the recent numbers that uh, indicate what's happening in the consumption side have been weaker. We've seen a, a weakening trend over the last two or three years. If we look at real retail sales, that growth turned negative at the last reading. New passenger car sales, that's been in decline for the last three years, growth in that sector. And the consumer confidence numbers that we got uh, out this week also at a very low level and even lower than we were at the 2008-2009 uh, recession. At that time, you know, nobody wanted to go out and buy goods and, uh, and you know, big purchases, houses, cars, because they didn't know if they were going to have income next month. And that's a similar situation that we're at now. People are holding back on those purchases of big ticket items because they're not sure if they're going to have jobs next month or next year. And, uh, and they'd rather be a little prudent and, and wait and see how things turn out. That kind of reservation or being reserved doesn't inspire economic activity, doesn't create that demand uh, and, and that feeds through into manufacturing. That sector has been improving of late with the, with the weaker end, but uh, we need to see that make a much bigger contribution to, to our local um, GDP. The other element of, uh, apart from the mining, um, the manufacturing on the production side is the mining side. That has picked up of late off a very low base uh, and that's, it has been very erratic, but we have seen the workers by and large go back to work. But we need to see increased production there. And that's quite difficult in an environment where commodity prices are, are fairly suppressed. And, and the outlook is that they're not going to go that much higher in the short term. So consumption is, is quite weak. Uh, mining is, is, is not shooting the lights out. Manufacturing just picking up. I think the difference, the, the outlook for that 2.7 versus 2.5% growth last year rests largely on our expectations for greater contribution from exports um, into next year. And that is on the back of the weaker end uh, and the fact that our exports are look a lot cheaper on, on the global stage.